and welcome back to the top eight of this here competition, the European Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship live from Antwerp. And you join me and my entourage as we're moseying past these top eight tables right now. Let me give you a list of who we've got. Table one is Federico Mikotzi playing Sprite versus Marcus Patel, who's currently undefeated with Rika and that is going to be an amazing matchup. Table two, we've got Luca Forian, who's got tier elements, versus Matteo Juni, who's got live twin sprites, and that is going to be another amazing match. Then table four, we have Joshua Schmidt, just featured on the sprites, versus Zio Mundry, and that is with a tier elements deck. And you might notice that one table is missing, and that's because we have an amazing feature for you guys in this top eight, and I'm on my way there right now. So I'll be joining our featured members on stage as we head on up and say hello to the guys that we've got. So we have Lars Jungnip, and we also have Ryan Jabri. Welcome, gentlemen. A big round of applause from our audience. That is what we want to hear. The excitement in the room is palpable for this top eight feature match. Guys, have you done a dice roll before coming up? Which of you would like to roll first? The roll is yours, sir. OK, that is a six. And that is an eight. So which of you will be going first? You're going to go first? OK, that means Ryan uh, Lars is going to be going first. So without any further ado, I'm going to throw you guys over to our Italian commentators who are going to take you through this very exciting top eight bout. Guys, take it away. Hi everyone and welcome to the top eight of the 2022 European Championship. What a way to do it. The last time we were here live back in 2020, YCS Utrecht for a European event. At the end of the entire thing, it was Ryan Yabri who took it and became a YCS champion. And what a way to do it after two and a half years, still showing up strong. He has been actually playing and doing well at some of the remote duo events. Not a surprise, but wow, he's here showing off once again how good of a player he is in the top eight up against Lars. Yeah, uh, we have seen that uh, Lars is playing a unique deck, Alter Guys. Yes, I mean, a uh, deck we haven't seen in a while, but still, uh, we have talked about how rock decks, especially during this format, can be very annoying, especially because like uh, all of the players are main decking multiple hand traps. Yeah. So this is one of the main reasons why Yards made it to the top eight and uh, has yeah. a good chance. I mean, as Ed went through the list of names, of course, there are a lot of uh, famous, we can say, players, but a lot of different decks uh, and especially a lot of different builds of these decks. Uh, and uh, Ryan uh, is also playing a more traditional uh, uh, sprite deck, but his build is quite unique. Uh, he has, yep. uh, first of all, the adventure engine, which we haven't seen too much of. Uh, and then uh, he's mixing it up with a lot of interesting one-offs. Uh, so we'll see if that decision uh, is paying off to him. But I mean, he's in the top eight, so that's already a really good achievement. Uh, his opponent, as you mentioned, we saw it on stream already two rounds ago. Altergeist uh, didn't seem like one of the decks to look for walking into the event, uh, but that's probably why Lars is successful with it. Yeah, indeed. It has always caused a lot of problems, especially because like having triple copy of multi-faker yeah. gets you through into the game. And uh, he also has some spies in the side deck, but Mystic Mine in the main yeah. deck. I mean, we just uh, saw in the last round uh, between Joshua and Herman uh, how good of a car Mystic Mine can be. And while we have to mention that in the previous rounds, Mystic Mine was mostly used as, uh, you know, a tool to just stop your opponent and then combo off. Uh, here we're going to get to see the actual use of Mystic Mine as a lock, uh, especially because he's playing Metaverse and three copies of the Mies of the Land. Uh, so it's going to be focused on that and we have to mention that outside of the Smashers, uh, Ryan is actually playing an additional out, which is uh, the Draco back uh, thanks to the Adventure Engine. So uh, we'll see. It will definitely be an interesting bar. But before further ado, our players are ready. Let's find out who will advance to the top four. Here they are, and as we saw, Lars did win the die roll, a huge deal in this matchup. But let's just see if he will be able to summon some of his Alter Guys cards.
definitely looking for like the marionetter, Melusik, uh, any of those uh, good normal summon starter engine cars. Uh, doesn't look like Ooh. it. Wow, and it's actually okay. a very underwhelming start with just two face down traps. This is not something that you usually see oh, no. while playing Alter, guys. Like, uh, you'll, you also have multiple pots, like Prosperity, Duality. Um, yeah. Kind of and, slow start. Uh, instead, uh, Ryan uh, goes with one of the best openings in this deck, the Water Enchantress. What a start. Uh, this will mean that even if there is a Demise of the Land face down, he has the out for the Mystic Mine now. And uh, once again, we get to see the chance of uh, Sprite having uh, very small packages inside. Uh, yep. Very few cards uh, of the Adventurer uh, um, engine. It indeed plays true right over Amazir. Yeah, so for now, he'll get to resolve his right. He gets the Faithful. Nice. And uh, this is already a big deal, unless there is, you know, a spoofing to maybe try and slow down his opponent. Uh, this gets things going fast for Ryan. Uh, what an unfortunate start from Lars, I gotta yeah. say. Because if he doesn't have, uh, like, for example, a spoofing, with spoofing, he, like, he will be able to put up the multi-faker, which could be huge. But it uh, looks like at the moment, uh, still... Yeah. Ryan uh, is going through the combo. Yeah, he just normal summon the blue to get the Draco back. Uh, at least he's gonna have a response in case, you know, a copy of Mystic Mine uh, gets dropped. Uh, and then he will be able to search for the Griffin if that's uh, what he wants to do, I guess. I think uh, that's uh, what's going on. Uh, he will be activating the Faithful to go for the Griffin Rider. Yeah, I think he wants to active. Yeah, he has the spoofing. Okay. Okay, so at least uh, a little bit of a hope for Lars uh, with the personal spoofing uh, activating just uh, the effect uh, of the faker without using the spoofing uh, as of right now. This will give him uh, uh, most likely a silk from the deck, uh, and it does. So. Yeah. Uh, it really depends on the other uh, card Lars has set. Because, like, apart from that, uh, it doesn't play end traps. Like, uh, the only one he's playing is Gamma, which is not useful at the moment. Yeah, the other uh, phase down is really important at the moment. He could be using it to get rid of the token uh, whenever just Ryan tries to equip, uh, you know, the Draco back. But he's doing it right now on the blue, probably, to make his opponent uh, brick, we could say. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, he's taking a risk, but I think. He, it's a good uh, decision overall. Yeah, especially because like if you start this low, um, you have to take the chance and uh, Ooh, risk it. Oh, but instead he goes for the token. Uh, interesting decision then, because he could have definitely waited for it. Uh, could this be a tell that then the other face down is something relevant? I think uh, we see a Diddy Crow in the end from Ryan, which is actually decent in this matchup. Uh, there are a few interesting applications. Uh, Wow, and now we see the carrot come down. Gonna be really strong against the other back row, possibly. Wow, and even the Ooh. jet. Uh, so what a decision. If he would have actually sent back the blue, he would have stopped his opponent completely. A little bit of a difficult decision here from Lars. Uh, I think it, he might regret uh, using the silk on the token now. You think he might have maybe solemn judgment? Maybe he thought, okay, maybe he's gonna go no. for another one. No way, no way. I think you always use it uh, otherwise and then just keep it. If that's the case, you can just solemn the normal and then spin back the token. But now the Smashers is there, so if uh, Ryan wants to play it super safe, he can just get rid easily of the other card. Uh, but he has the carrot, so he's in a really good spot at the moment. And even Foolish Burial good. to top things off. Yeah. And this is one of the interesting cards uh, that he is playing, uh, which is the Nimble Angler. Yeah, a card we haven't seen so far this weekend. Um, yeah, it's actually really, really strong. So great stuff here from Ryan. Uh, once again, showing off uh, one of the really good things you can do is uh, use the Nimble together with, uh, of course, the Faithful Adventure discard effect. 
whenever you draw it. But otherwise, as you can see here, you just get two of the beavers and it does so much for you. Yeah, it's pretty nice. And we have seen uh, some players relying on the Nibble Beaver rather than the Deep Sea Diva. Yeah. Because like, you can bring it up again uh, from the graveyard, which is uh, anyway, a good addition. But yeah, now there is so much that Ryan can do. He just has to play a little careful about the last break row, but it's uh, so, so good for him at the moment. And this gigantic sprite uh, is going to get it by impermanence. Uh, uh, and that's yeah. negated. And yeah, unfortunately, we see a very quick game one. Ryan takes it and is now one game away from advancing to the top four. What a start. Uh, yeah, Absolutely. I mean, Lars started pretty slowly. Uh, yeah. He had the spoofing with the multifaker, but it was definitely not enough. Uh, as you said, he might have bounced back the blue. Yeah, I think that was uh, definitely a wrong decision at the end. Uh, when he had the silk, uh, knowing especially now that there was an impermanence, he could have just uh, used the silk on the normal, which was blue. And then uh, Ryan would have been left with just Sprite Monsters. Uh, he would have searched for uh, a Griffin, but I guess with the Foolish Burial on the Nimble, uh, it would have been still interesting. And I think, uh, regardless, the Foolish Burial would have been too good, and uh, Ryan would have won the match regardless. So at least uh, uh, Lars uh, can uh, feel reassured, you know, he would have lost uh, that game uh, no matter what. So congratulations to Ryan for performing as well. And now, I think, going second against Altergeist, what do you think uh, he's going to put in his deck? Um, like, his side deck is very, you know, he has a lot of different cards, very, you know, small amounts of cards, yeah. but he has the Red Booth, which is, like, by far the best one, along with the RP's Fitted Duster. We're going to see them 100% no matter what. And I think that's it, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we were saying just, like, how rogue decks and uh, decks like uh, Eldlick and, uh, I mean, even Altergeist the can perform really well because uh, a lot of players are cutting cards like Twin Twister, Cosmic from their side decks and Ryan is one of them. Yeah. So we'll see if that decision actually comes back. Uh, but winning game one, I feel like, is a huge deal yeah. against such a deck. Especially because like after losing the die roll and your opponent start like, just two back row. I think... Uh, That's the dream. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. But instead, Lars uh, is now Picking a decision, I guess. In the main deck, as we could see, he was focusing on Mystic Mine. In the side deck, he has a lot of success with another few spell, almost as annoying, I would say, which is Secret Village of the Spellcasters. He has been dominating throughout the top cut with the car, cutting off uh, players from using their Twin Twister, Feather Duster. So we'll definitely see Secret Village come in. Outside of that, uh, I guess, uh, Solemn Judgment uh, and Rivalry of Warlords are both really good cards going first. So I think he has uh, a really good advantage uh, now that we go into game two. And it will be Ryan who really needs to pick up, reboot most of them. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much ready, so with uh, only eight minutes uh, for the game one, we have plenty of time. Luckily for these duelists, so let's see, they're almost ready and Lars uh, is gonna go first most likely and uh, try and do a little bit of a more impressive opening than the previous game. Ooh, he let Ryan start. Wow, definitely an uh, unusual thing. So Lars, uh, with the unexpected move, uh, let Ryan go first, actually. So Altergeist going second in this game, uh, not something we were predicting at the moment. Uh, and let's see if Ryan actually drew into some of these uh, going second cards that are not going to do much. So instead, Lars uh, decided to bring in the Winter Dragon and Sphere mode. Yeah. Uh, but then this is risky, though, because like apart from that, you have the Gamma. Wow, and we already Ooh. see an underwhelming opening here by Ryan. Uh, this is definitely n Ooh, not what you want to be opening. Uh, a very weak start uh, at the moment from Ryan. Let's see if this gigantic resolve. It seems like it does, but still not exactly what you're looking for when going first. Yeah, you don't really want to see both Red and Carrot uh, in your study hand. Uh, still, if Lars 
doesn't have uh, a gamma. Uh... Wow, does he even just go and play it safe right now? And it's possible that he even drew the Ronin. That would be absolutely insane. Let's see if he just preferred to go for this line. I think it makes sense because you want to prioritize totally. So if you play this order, then if they have a DD Crow, you can negate it with the red. Yeah. So this is a niche uh, interaction that Ryan played really well around uh, the DD Crow. So well played by the French player. And now, yeah, we just see the totally awesome uh, come down uh, pretty soon, I would expect. Great to deal with uh, Mystic Mine uh, if there are no other ways to force it. And yeah, here it comes. And he also Ryan, plays, uh, uh, you know... Yeah, passes back and let's see if uh, this decision from Lars is gonna pay off. Uh, first of all, Ryan is one of the few Sprite duelists in this top 8 using uh, the dupe. Uh, and he does go for it, so... I think he played well also around Super Poly, you know, by passing with the Elf and uh, the Totally Awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, if he wanted to, though, he shouldn't have used the Totally at the moment, because uh, now Super Polymerization would be live. But I think still this could be quite annoying for Lars to deal with. Let's see. Uh, he does play Sphere Mode, so if uh, this Dupe Frog uh, gets tributed by uh, the sphere mode from Lars, then the decision to bring it out uh, is really bad against both the super polymerization and the sphere mode. And also there's three copies of Lava Golem, which uh, we might yeah. see in action, because like his main decking, so he's thinking about them. Um... Let's see. He goes instead for the Marionette right away and uh, he's gonna give Ryan a chance to activate uh, the totally, I think. And, and it does. does. Yeah. Is there gonna be a chain? Uh, I think uh, he's gonna chain uh, the elf, possibly. He's definitely considering it. I think it makes sense. Uh, you give up on an ad, uh, but it would be the greatest. I think he doesn't go for Ooh. it, though. Interesting. So Ryan uh, gets punished uh, heavily here by the Mystic Mine. He could have played around that, uh, but instead uh, uh, decides not to use the off on the totally right away. And uh, uh, this is an interesting decision from the French player. I think uh, well played by Lars, and now play will be back to the French player. And now it's not going to be easy for Ryan because, as we said, he has the. I mean. He must have... Eh, Ooh, and the Feather Duster! And the Soft Handball! That was a quick one, yeah. Wow. <laughs> what a way! Yeah, we were just <laughs> saying that Tarpy's Feather Duster was the guard to go for, but Feather Duster the from the top, but solemn judgment to stop it. Uh, it seems as if for a moment Ryan would just quickly went into a 2 and 0, but solemn judgment there to stop the feather duster. So, a little bit of a <laughs> tough moment. And now, looking at it, I think he only has one smashers, right? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Only one smashers alongside the Drago back uh, engine, and it's gonna be tough uh, for Ryan. Uh, to get rid of this Mystic Mine at the moment. Especially because, like, Lars is playing three Solemn Judgments, so he might have another one. Possibly. Yeah. And now, if you are uh, Lars, uh, yeah, I don't think you do anything. You just uh, wait and uh, see if your opponent will actually get his hand on uh, whatever out he might have left. Ooh, but Ooh. this is a huge one. He does get one of the others, and rivalry, though, gets flipped. Uh, interesting. <laughs> Great stuff by Lars. Uh, this cuts off uh, completely the other out, uh, which would have been the Draco back, uh, and leaves Ryan with very, very few answers left. Uh, one of them being uh, pretty much only the smashes. Yeah. <laughs> and I think uh, until uh, Ryan <laughs> draws it. Uh, yeah, and now he's looking for another solemn judgment to just close the game. Uh, we can't quite see. I see a Mystic Mine, but the rest I can't quite tell. Let's see.
Yeah, we didn't get to see what he added with the duality. Yeah, we're gonna just ask uh, our <laughs> great judge at the table what was the pick. It was a second copy of Riverly, so that's the card that was added from the duality. And now the Melo 6 actually come down. Do you think uh, you would have just kept it in your hand and uh, not even allowed Ryan to play through? Uh, we saw players uh, activating Misting Mine and then playing with it. Um, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, maybe it could have just passed also, because like uh, Ryan is basically left uh, with uh, with his measure and that's it. But now Ryan uh, has not really many options. He can't attack, he can't uh, even flip, uh, and he's pretty much forced to just pass back unless he gets into the smashers. Yeah. Uh, very, very few options uh, uh, left. Uh, so this Melusik still being quite safe. Uh, what a turnaround uh, with that solemn judgment. Yeah, I think Lars is super happy now. Like, yeah, uh, and as mentioned, Ryan uh, completely stuck at the moment between Mystic Mine and Riverly. Uh, let's see if he decides to still keep attacking. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one here from the German player. Would rather just pass and wait. Uh, it's possible. I mean, uh, you do want to push uh, some damage at some point, but as we mentioned, uh, at the moment, Rivalry is also a great option. Uh, can we check if maybe he's playing any outs uh, like Unicorn in the extra deck, if there wasn't the Rivalry? Uh, no, he's not. Not even playing them, no. so tough, tough uh, times at the moment. And it does go again. Uh, this could even be just a, a very sad, in a way, uh, 500 damage every turn without even uh, using the effect of Melusik anymore. I think that's uh, a decent plan. Yeah, you just keep attacking your opponent directly and burn it. Yeah. And I think this is what he's considering. Just not using, but he does Ooh. go into Memphis Shoe for a Silk. Interesting. What do you think is the plan now? Because uh... yeah, it's uh, definitely to just cut off uh, your opponent from any possible outs, uh, ah. and he even gets the Malusik yeah. instead of the Multifaker at the moment. Interesting uh, decision there. Maybe he's holding uh, into another copy of the Faker already, but still uh, Ryan desperately trying to get to his measures. Uh, I see a spell, but. I can't quite tell which one it is. Let's also check the side decks. Uh, yeah, okay. So I can uh, already tell you that uh, we might see a game where at the moment Ryan is not really interested in uh, uh, picking his cars up. Uh, because between the two, of course, and Solemn Judgment, he would be the one favorite uh, uh, going into time. So let's see what he decides to go for. He switches to attack position, but he cannot, uh, right? Yeah, he cannot. Yeah. Uh, He cannot declare an attack with Mystic Mine, and uh, of course uh, it's gonna get uh, fixed uh, right away. Uh, the carrot uh, should be in attack mode. Yeah. Yeah, so luckily we uh, fix it uh, right away thanks to our table judge, and now play is back to the German. As we mentioned, he's completely locked at the moment. The rivalry keeps him there, and even the decision to set the marionette is costing him at the moment. Yeah, but uh, the, the main issue here is that uh, maybe Lars thinks that uh, Ryan might be having uh, light, copies of Lightning Storm in his deck. Yeah. So that's why maybe he wants to not rely so much on Mystic Mine. Of course. Uh, now still. he's going to be using the other effect to get back the Melusik. Uh, and maybe destroy the face down card from Ryan. Uh, let's see, he's gonna be an impermanence. Uh, okay. Uh, he could uh, negate it with uh, Extia. 
just to get uh, you know rid of the monster if he doesn't want to uh, link him in his shoe, and he does. Makes sense, uh, you get rid of a monster, you're still keeping him in check with the Mystic Mind, so might as well use it, uh, and now he will get to uh, search a Faker. So Completely in control, but as I was mentioning, uh, uh, as time goes by, Ryan does have a solution, let's say, if he goes into time, because he is one of those players who is siding the Red Resonator, so if he ever goes into a game free in time, Ryan does have an option for that, so that's why we probably will not see him picking up his cards unless he picks, you know, the, yeah. the Smashers or one of his side deck options. Oh, and I think it makes sense, especially because uh, uh there's plenty of time, still your opponent uh, looks like he doesn't really want to rely on the mine. Uh, no, for now he's playing it, uh, and he's actually doing it, I think, in the end phase, so interesting stuff. Uh, he gets rid of his own mine, he has seen enough, and now he just wants to combo through. We'll go for the Faker, just thinking on the positions, uh, and uh, we'll try to maybe even go for game yeah. uh, next turn. And a good thing here is that you can bounce back the marionette mm -hmm. and you get it back to your own end, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have seen players taking advantage of Mystic Mine and then getting rid of it at the right moment, uh, which is basically what Lars is doing here. Uh, like, yeah. uh, setting up this impressive field. Uh, uh, yeah, makes the marionette. Yeah, he takes back his own marionette, and I think he has all the tools to actually go for an OTK next uh, turn. Uh, Altre guys is one of those, uh, I mean, uh, controlling decks that can actually put up a lot of damage, mainly due to the Axia, which is gaining attack by the monster he points to. So if he goes for double Axia, bounce back uh, the carrot, it's easily, easily game. But let's see if uh, Lars uh, sees the line. And I think he definitely yeah. will. And yeah, now can activate the Faker. Yeah, Faker brings back. Um. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, you just... Uh, ooh, not using the Silk. I think you use the Silk, bounce back the carrot, then you make a second uh, uh, XTI and it's just game already. Yeah. So it's, uh, it should be pretty straightforward to go for it, but let's see if the German player is actually seeing the line. Uh, I think I would use the effect yeah. for sure, but okay. Interesting. He doesn't use the Faker, he doesn't use the Silk, and he still goes for the XTI right away. I guess uh, he's doing it in a different uh, way, it still works, but okay. Yeah. This will be plenty of damage, uh, it goes through with an attack, uh, and 1-1, one, one. you can hear uh, the crowd going crazy, and what a game, yeah. Now it's gonna be interesting, because uh, we have seen that Lars made uh, Ryan go first. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> So this is one of those scenarios, where, just like with Joshua last round, where uh, he, in game one he chose to go second, uh, which it's already surprising, but Alter guys going second is a shocker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but uh, if you're Ryan, I don't think there's a world in which you want to go second against Alter guys, right? No, no way. And uh, looking at the side decks, uh, there is not even much that he can change. Uh, as mentioned, uh, Ryan is not really siding any options. He only has one Feather Duster and one Reboot. That's it. No other side deck option. Uh, on the other hand, though, it will be really interesting whether Lars uh, is now expecting to go second or first. If he goes second, he has uh, Lava Golem, Mystic Mine, Sphere Mode, so a lot of tools for going second. He's even maining Forbidden Droplet, which uh, saw a lot of uh, uh, decrease in popularity yeah. for Dark Lurer, I guess. Um, but still, I really like the fact that uh, I think Lars, uh, at this specific spot, has an advantage. Yeah. Because, like, uh, most likely Ryan will go first. So, no matter what, I think that, uh, like, Lava Golem and Sphere Mode will. Uh, cause problems if we might see have the chance to see them on the other hand i think that uh, uh, ryan really wants to having some chance because like um 
Yeah, the problem is if he goes first, then he loses to all of these cards we have already yet seen. So maybe he goes second, but then if you go second against the deck uh, and you don't see that one copy of Feather Duster or Reboot, you lose even just to a rivalry yeah. or a strike or a solemn judgment even sometimes. So. Without further ado, though, our players are ready, so let's jump back into it and find out in Game 3 who will be the first player to advance to the top four. First of all, let's see what Ryan decided to go for. I think he is going first, so Ryan going first and opening the starter. Best way to do it. Yeah, we said it 100%. There's no way you can let other guys start. Like, uh, yeah, no he, way. he cannot afford the risk. Uh, and uh, we'll see if maybe Lars has a copy of Gamma. That could be interesting. Uh, we know that he is uh, maining actually yeah. free. So maybe he does have the Gamma. Let's see. Definitely considering uh, taking a look at his other hand traps. Uh, yes, the impermanence. Uh, does he have the Faker? Wow! Wow! This is a <laughs> what a wow. what a champ. This is huge. Yeah, this is uh, absolutely insane stuff. Uh, the best uh, combo, if we can even call it a combo, the Alter Geist has. Uh, and now it's interesting because, of course, uh, you're not gonna use it uh, right away. Yeah. But you can probably wait for the gigantic, I would say. Yeah, you just wait him to summon the gigantic. Yeah. Uh, Ryan is in trouble. Uh, yeah. He has to deal with the... With the silk, which yeah. is so annoying. And I think if you go second, uh, these are the really true cards you really want to open. Yeah, I mean... Uh, <laughs> I kind of feel bad for Ryan at the moment, but he still has ways to play around this. And he goes for Super Polymerization! Oh. Wow! And it's interesting that he gets rid of the Cold by the Grave because, like, uh, he knows that his opponent most likely he knows, is not playing uh, any other hand traps. Yeah. Ah, yes, true. He activated the starter already. Ooh, so, uh, yeah. luckily for them, yeah, he true. fixed him right away. He can only summon level two. So, uh, once again, our judge fixed it. Uh, and uh, you can see him just sending a card and uh, laughing it off. Uh, and Ryan is just going to be ending his turn uh, back to the German player, who now has uh, huge information about yeah. the sack card from wow. Ryan. <sighs> I mean, he's thinking about it, but... Uh... I mean, you can just use it in the end phase yeah. uh, to play safe. Uh, uh, might as well, if he wants to. Yeah. He does. So the Silk will be activated in the end phase, uh, sends the Super Polymerization back to Ryan. And now, wow, the Marionetter even. Wow. What a start. Incredible stuff here from Lars. Uh, I think this is the Really tough, end. tough yeah. time, yeah. But he has to play around, you know, the Super Polymerization yeah. being there. So he gets the protocol, really good card. We all know it. Getting a negation uh, is really good by on his own, and uh, when you actually even destroy the monster, that's huge against Pride because you get rid of the level two on field. And uh, this is a tough uh, board, uh, uh, for how ironic that sounds against uh, Sprite. Yeah, and uh, let's see if Lars any, has any uh, back row. Was like Ryan might be holding. A copy of Red Booth or Arpis yeah, Feather the Duster. Feather Duster. Yeah. He goes for free back. Wow. Wow. What an opening from Lars. And he goes right away for the Protocol. So, definitely interesting. Uh, he, he completely disrespects at the moment. Uh, okay, he's thinking. Uh, okay. Does he have the Red Rebute, maybe? He doesn't. doesn't, okay. So for now, he will be able to push forward. Uh, he cannot use at the moment super polymerization as they all different, but depending what it brings out, uh, 
probably gonna be the Melusic. Yeah. Still no chance to activate the polymerization yet. Let's see. I'm really curious to see what the other three back rows are. Might be holding Solemn Judgment. And this is so tough for a Sprite, because you have a bounce in the form of Silk. And now you can just tribute for Protocol, and this could be so strong. Yeah, 100%, yeah. you just go for the Protocol, tribute to negate Swap Frog, and... Uh, I don't think uh, that Ryan was actually using outs outside of the Smashers, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And he goes for it. Protocol is activated, uh, and Ryan is thinking about it. Definitely a tense game at the moment. Uh, each player does not... Ooh, wow. and we see the end already, the handshake. Wow. Wow. Lars uh, takes it 2-1 and one in a very convincing comeback. What a match. Let's go back to us. What a match once again. We picked it for you guys to showcase uh, the last uh, European YCS winner of YCX Utrecht 2020 with Ryan Yabri. Unfortunately, though, at the end, it is Lars who once again takes the spotlight and with Altergeist, he moves on to the top four. What a match. Who would have said it? I mean, after game one, we have to say that uh, Lars didn't open well, just to back row. Uh, Ryan was able to put pressure on his opponent and take him one, but then Lars remained focused. Uh, game two, he had the judgment on the Feather Duster, which was huge incredible. absolutely and as we mentioned uh, game one would usually would feather and favor you know those kind of decks like Artergeist, uh, Eldritch uh, but in this specific instance Ryan was able to steal away the game one and I think the advantage was all on him for game two and three incredible. but at the very end uh, we saw that the side deck was kind of weak against such a deck uh, only one copy of feather duster only one copy of reboot uh, he does get his hands uh, on the one copy of Feather Duster, but it's negated by Solemn Judgment. And once again, Mystic Mine uh, giving one of our players the win. Uh, also, we gotta say, though, that the decision in Game 2, which gave him the win, was let Ryan go first. Yeah, uh, this was like a huge responsibility that he took, but he paid off. Uh, he paid off well, because like with the Lava Golem and Sphere mode, uh, he had a lot of cars going second. So I think the high risk, high reward, especially... For sure, it was definitely an interesting strategy. We are picking up. We'll see if Joshua Smith also advanced to the top four, because then we might have two duelists who are both uh, choosing to go second quite often. But regardless, uh, it was uh, definitely a great show from both of these guys. But in the end, as we mentioned, uh, game three, more of a dominant one, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, game three, he had the nuts. Yeah, uh, I guess like, we can say that. Uh, Multi-faker plus impermanence. Yeah. Faker impermanence, uh, as we mentioned, the alter gets combo, but sometimes it works, uh, and when that does, just like in this match, uh, it takes it away. Uh, there was a little bit of uh, a catch with the super polymerization. We couldn't be activated due to the starter. I don't think it would have changed dramatically the match, but in the end, uh, it was just a, a slaughter, I gotta say, from Lars, who went uh, on to the marionette, set the protocol, and just completely dominated the game. Uh, even one of those cards beats uh, the majority of ends from Sprite, because we mentioned it. Some players are using enemy controller to take away their monsters just because then one normal summon is important. When you have both Silk and Protocol, that's two interactions. Uh, it's almost impossible yeah, to deal with it's it. It's like impossible. But yeah. uh, the thing is that uh, uh, Ryan is playing Feather Duster and Rather Booth. And I think the reasoning behind is that if you want to play a 12 round tournament, uh, you basically prepare yourself to play yeah. against the meta decks. And then if you play a, against a road deck, you just say, Okay, let's deal with that, and this is what happened. It happened in top eight. So. Absolutely, and you gotta prepare and beat at least the main decks, which of course, walking into this event, were mainly Sprite, uh, Tier Elements, uh, arguably Math Mac, but like mainly those two, and uh, I think if they got to this stage, it meant that they already went through 16 to 17 matches, which is 
a ton, yeah. and they had to play against a lot of these decks and beat them. So they were still doing a great job, uh, no matter what. Uh, and uh, as we will get our other top eight matches going through, I'm pretty sure Marcus Patel already won uh, and advanced to the top four with this uh, Rika San Avalon deck, which is absolutely the one and main shock uh, from this event. But I guess uh, soon enough we will be able to have the winner of this match, Lars, with us uh, for an additional interview, which will be interesting to see because uh, uh, we might ask him how many matches he won going second. I think you really wouldn't expect Alter guys to go second, no, right? Exactly, because uh, most of the times I think uh, playing against Alter guys that you are really scared of going second because yep. like he has a lot of interruptions to put on the field. But still, he proved us that uh, the deck by going second is still, I mean, amazing. It is easy to say because, like in game three, he, he had the Faker plus the impermanence. But in game two, he was basically able to deal with the Ryan's field, and uh, it was very good. Absolutely, and uh, uh, as we just uh, mentioned, uh, there will be still two match remaining. We will go through the top four, and then we will go through, of course, the one and only finals of the 19 rounds, which will be what a story to just crown. Finally, after three years, uh, a European champion. Uh, and we'll see who it is. Of course, at the moment, we know already half of the top four participants. One, Marcus Patel, which, by the way, has an impressive uh, record as that was going through the uh, motions. Uh, he is still undefeated. Uh, but technically, I gotta say, he has a draw, so he went uh, for an impressive 11 wins and one draw through the Swiss rounds, and then he's still undefeated up until now, which basically makes it uh, 16 wins uh, and one draw. What an impressive score. It's approaching you, huh? <laughs> he's approaching me, yeah. He could get to an incredible result of winning, uh, going uh, 18 and one draw, which would be absolutely astonishing. Uh, but, as mentioned, the other half of the top four is still playing. We'll see at the end whether the top four results will be. But for now, who could have predicted that half of the top four for the European Championship would have been Altergeist and San Avalon? Like, that's unbelievable, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's only other two players, so our picks of the tournament maybe are still, are still there. <laughs> yeah. We could still get the other half uh, of uh, more regular decks in the form of, you know, sprites uh, and tier laments. Uh, but we're still not quite sure whether that would be the case uh, as uh, the other half of the top four. We can probably ask you guys to bring up uh, the bracket uh, for the top eight uh, on the screen so we can show how it is proceeding. In a moment, we will just go through the matches and show you, as I was saying, how this event is going through. Let's remember, this is still the biggest European championship ever held and the first time in Yu-Gi-Oh! history that we had a top 128. So it was definitely an incredible one. And I think when you go through such a stage, uh, you also have to give credit to Lars for not being maybe one of those most known players, but playing on stage twice and already crushing yeah. it. But especially because like, I don't think he was expecting, maybe. Like, it was really li nice to, to ask him, uh, would you expect to top four with Alter, guys? Yeah, I mean, you know? <laughs> that's always something, uh, a little bit of a weird question to ask, because anyone walking into the cast is going to struggle a little bit. But as I was saying, uh, we can show you guys once again the top eight bracket for this event. Uh, as you can see, Marcus Patel going and crushing the competition with his San Avalon deck, got to play against uh, Federico Mecozzi, who unfortunately beat in top 16 his uh, friend uh, and also roommate uh, Federico Pastore with uh, his uh, version of Sprite, uh, meaning three copies of Enemy. But we can already tell you that Marcus Patel won the match uh, and advanced to the top four. But going through with the top eight match, the other one is the one between Luca. And Matteo, once again, uh, Italians uh, doing pretty well, but unfortunately losing out in the end. Uh, Matteo Mordanini, you know him pretty well, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, he comes from Rome. He's yeah. a friend of mine. Um, he plays yesterday. Actually, funny story about him. Yesterday, he was uh, after, you know, nine rounds, uh, 256th 
player. Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> insane. You never can count someone off because, uh, of course, after day one, we had a cut where we took the first uh, 256 player and Matteo Mordanini was actually the last place. It was 256th and he made it all the way up to top 16, which is uh, an incredible yeah. record just because of the size of this event. On the other hand, though, again, Alessio Scheffola, something you're, someone you're rather familiar with, right? Yeah, uh, I know Alessio, he plays uh, at our local uh, in Rome. Yeah. Uh, he's one of these guys that always uh, play testing a lot with his friends uh, during the week and the weekend. Uh, he and plays Sprite. And, yeah, uh, we, we have to mention as well uh, another interesting story about Alessio. Unfortunately, he was competing and doing really well at the Italian National Championship uh, this year, but he was not feeling that well, so he had to run actually uh, to the hospital. He, nothing serious in the end, but he got dropped out of the event. And still, he proved to himself that he was good enough to make it to the top cut, got his first premier event top, and what a way to do it uh, if uh, top 16 uh, at the biggest stage. So congratulations to him. But then moving forward with the top eight, uh, we can again talk about the remaining tables. And yeah, a little bit of uh, some known names, we can say. Yeah, I mean, we saw our 16, uh, top 16 matches, <laughs> Joshua versus Herman. It was an incredible match. Uh, two of the best European players at the moment, uh, but I think in the last years as well. Uh, Absolutely, both were competitors uh, showing off uh, and uh, pretty much proving event after event that they are among the best. But in the end, uh, Actually, Joshua got to play against one of the underdogs, uh, uh, Zio Mandri, actually a German player with, we would love to have an interview with later. He's actually an actor in his, uh, in his life, uh, and uh, what a way to just uh, put them together. But eventually, he did lose uh, and uh, got to the top eight, played against Joshua, and I'm pretty sure Joshua Schmidt actually lost. So Joshua, I'm sure I'm almost 99% sure that he lost the match to Zio and so it is Zio who is the third player advancing uh, to the top four but in just a moment as I was mentioning we will have our interview live with Lars and Ed thank you guys for watching see you later on in the finals because the top four will be casted by our German lovely colleagues uh, Ed smash it Thank you, Marcello. And speaking of smashing it, this Altergeist deck has been smashing the competition, Lars. Congratulations on getting into the top four. Did you foresee Altergeist being one of the decks that got this far in the Euros? Uh, no, I'm not, I not, not expecting that, that Altergeist will go in the top four because, um, yeah, normally it's not that good, but with mine, it's so amazing. So, yeah, top four. And congratulations again on getting into the top four. Let's just go through some of the plays that happened. Game one started a little bit slowly for you, but then you let Ryan go first in game two instead of going first yourself. Talk to us a little bit about that decision. Why did you do that? Yeah, I side cards like um, <laughs> to out the board, I will say, and that's the reason why I go, f uh, go, go second in that case. But it works for me because, um, yeah, it was amazing and uh, it doesn't need the, the board breaker cards in that moment, yeah. Now, one of the best things about doing these top cut matches is that we have a huge audience of people here who are reacting to amazing moments that happen. So like in game three, there was a moment with Imperm and Multifaker off the bat, and then Super Poly, Marionetta, Negating Swap Frog. You had so many great plays. Yes. So talk to us about how you were feeling in game three and how you kept composed. Absolutely amazing. It was the first time that I had Imperm going second, so I can activate it, but then I had Faker 2, and I have to say, I uh, boarded one Faker out, so I was just playing two Faker and three Imperm, and I had to combo, and it was amazing, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it went so well, so congratulations to you one more time, Lars. Our first top four feature, which means you've only got two more of these left, and it's gonna be absolutely amazing seeing who takes home this European title. You can see all the prizes for some of the contestants in front of us, and there's gonna be even more coming out as we get further towards that final match. Don't go anywhere because we've got top four coming right up.